All righty. I think I am live. Jason, how's it going? Very quick to the punch. Good to see you here. And we will wait to see some people get in. It looks like the stream started very well. Nice and quick. We're in for a fun one today. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. Definitely not as long as the last one. Certainly. Mackie, what's going on? All right. We got six people in here so far and three, three, three thumbs up already. Not bad. Hit that thumbs up if you're just coming in. Excuse me. I just ate lunch and something spicy. So while we're waiting for people to get here, I'm going to munch on my Frosty and some walnuts. Kelly, how's it going? Mud Swap, what's going on? Yes, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be showing uh, the Estate Salt Hall. I don't have it all right here. I'm going to have to go run, go run in the house and uh, around the house and grab the stuff. Uh, but good story. Um, I was kind of like a whirlwind after the last stream. Um, we had low humidity here the next day and I actually found another location and had an awesome metal detecting hunt that I got to get the footage ready to post. It should be about an hour long video. So I should have quite a few detecting videos coming over the summer here, but I'm ex excited to share uh, with everyone what's going on, everything I picked up, and we'll try to see if we can get some stuff working here on the stream. BH, what's going on? Jan, how you? good to see you here. Brian, Bud, Bricket fan. All right, so we're, I'm going to give it some time here to let some more people get in, and then I'll start going over some of the estate sale finds um, that I got today. So let, let me get a few bites of this. I just had something spicy to local a deli. I had a blackened turkey panini, and it was a lot more spicy than I expected, so I stopped at Wendy's to get a Frosty on the way back, and I'm throwing some walnuts in there. Robert, good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. And um, FYI, for the whole ghost, um, the ghost pepper almonds thing on the last stream, um, no complications coming out the other end. And um, I will say, though, my throat was uh, the back of my the throat and a little bit in the back of my mouth was raw for um, not, not quite 24. Like it, it was, uh, I, so I just tried to stay away from anything acidic, like fruit, anything like that. It was only raw for until like the, it just felt off for up until like the next day. <laughs> no, Jason, no 24 hour stream. I didn't even know I was going to stream today, but I got back from that estate sale, which I'll tell the story here in a minute. You can see that there. That actually came from the estate. Um, I had to pick that up. So uh, first super chat today gets the first dunk on the new hoop, or a shot, I should say. Now I have something that I can shoot at from here. And I have a few basketballs I just got to put air in. Uh, they're in the other room. I'll grab them. And we'll mess with that. Apparently, I didn't even know when I bought it because I just picked it up because I knew it was a good price. It's electronic. So... It has a motion sensor when you make a basket. It like keeps score. You can see that right there. Um, so yeah, that'll be a lot of fun for the streams. So um, let's wait a little bit longer for here, people to get in here. I'll start going over from over some of the state stuff in the story. Marie, good to see you. All right, I'm not eating all this now. I don't want to annoy everyone. I just need to get some of that spice out of my mouth. And some creamy ice cream will do that. I'm going to put this in, the, in my freezer, finish it later. Okay, so I guess we'll just start getting right into this, a little bit of the story. So there is a, there was an estate sale not too far away from me in a small, very, very, very old town, one of the older towns in Tennessee, but it's a small town. 
And um, it, it is an estate that has two houses on it. And it's kind of like right, right off of a, um, a main street, the, literally the main street going right through the town. And um, it looks like apparently it was one of the most prominent families in that town for a very, very long time. And um, so I looked at the pictures. I estimated just off of what they showed and just estimating they probably had a ton of other stuff. I was thinking, man, these people probably have $100,000 worth of antique and vintage uh, furniture and furnishings and knickknacks and china and you name it. Like this is a this is this was like a real deal estate. So I was going to go to it yesterday on the first day and I forgot early in the day and I had some other stuff to do and I didn't go. So I went on the second day and there was tons of stuff there. They basically opened up both of these old houses. These are like from what I can see, these are definitely uh, 1800s houses right off the main street. And they just opened both of them up and priced everything. And apparently the lady that lived there was definitely a collector of China. Even on day two, I couldn't explain to you how much China there was. Like plates and silverware and cups and complete sets and you name it. Just probably a thousand pieces. Um, so I can't imagine what got cherry picked on the first day, um, but it was a weekday and they did it from like 2 to 7 p.m. I'm sure it was packed there with people. So going early on the second day, um, I still got to pick over to see if there was anything left decent. There's not, there wasn't a lot of like antique, like 100 year old plus stuff at this estate. It was more so vintage stuff. It was kind of like mid, mostly, I mean, there was antique stuff, don't get me wrong, but mostly mid century modern up until like the 1990s was most of the stuff. So you kind of had to pick through it. Um, a lot of it was more knickknacky stuff that, you know, didn't really interest me, but I tried to pick up some really cool stuff. So I'm going to just start showing um, everyone uh, what I picked up. So, and apparently they, they had a ton of jewelry there hung on a chest. Like I saw in the pictures, all the jewelry was like cleaned out. Um, so there was, unfortunately, there was probably some good stuff to cherry pick there, but there was pretty much no jewelry left, um, by the time I got there on the second day. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to go to this, going to garage sales, estate sales, any type of thing, you can build up a, a reputation, talk to people. It's really good for networking, uh, for treasure hunting and stuff like that. Um, and it's funny that people that work there were wearing like teal shirts and I have this blue one on and I guess I just look industrious and I'm always wandering around. People thought I was working for the estate. So people kept asking me questions. I was even helping people out to their vehicles and stuff. So come on, focus. Uh, I'll have to change the lighting angle if it keeps, it might be trying to focus on this, but anyway. Um, so I hung out for quite a while and I, I talked to the guy there uh, on day two, they were only supposed to do mostly like 15% off any furniture items and everything else was usually full price. I said, uh, you know, what are you guys doing for negotiation? I said, if I make a big pile of stuff, I said, um, can, you know, can you give me a little bit of deal? Or are you doing like, you know, half off like the last day of the sale? Like how does this work? So he said, you know, um, he, you know, I, I, I kind of showed him that I would be interested in quite a pile of stuff. And he said, yeah, we'll, we'll work something out. Just make a pile and we'll go through it. So I spent probably two hours there just, uh, moseying around the houses. Um, I didn't do any filming because, you know, there was quite a bit of people there. Um, but if I go back, I could, I may go back on the last day when everything's pretty much 50 to 70% off or pretty much at that point, make, you know, make an offer because, you know, anything they can sell stops them having to, um, donate and dispose of things. Um, so and long story short, the guy that runs the estate, um, I got his business card. He was super nice. And um, I'm going to get in contact with him when the whole thing's over. It runs another three days yet. And um, he's he's going to help me see if I he can get me permission uh, from the uh, owners of the estate uh, to metal detect there. And this is a very, very, very historic area. So it could be really good. And I told him, you know, uh, you know, I was into the history and, you know, I'd be willing if I found anything sentiment, sen sentimental, you know, that I would be willing to just give it back to the family. So um, definitely an open door there as far as maybe getting permission to uh, metal detect. Um, I will say the day after the last live stream ended, I ended up having one of my best metal detecting hunts of the year so far. And um, it's going to be a very long video and I'm very excited. 
I made one really, really, really good find, and I found quite a few old coins jewelry. It was one of the best uh, variety hunts in quite a while. So a lot going on here. Um, now into the story with this basketball hoop. So um, I'll bring it up closer here a little bit. Perfect size for inside. It even has a little, uh, like a base that you put water or sand in it. It has a flexible rim, so it doesn't break. Now, it's just plastic, but it's it's a better one. Probably brand new. I mean, this was probably like $80. I don't know. Um, probably like 79 bucks. I didn't even know when I got it because I wasn't paying attention. You can see it has batteries in it and it's electronic. So you flip it on and it has a sensor. So we'll show it here. But before I get into that, um, I, I don't even know if I, I can probably adjust it. So, but anyway, I can set it like way over there or something. Um, so here's the story. There was not any like kids stuff there. Um, it was, I mean, the amount of clothing too, like the vintage women's clothing, it was like a Goodwill. There was racks and racks and racks of it. But I saw this there. And um, since I was talking to the guy as he was trying to figure out what to charge me for everything, and um, we were trying to make a deal, um, he told me the story behind this. So uh, the lady that passed um, was, I believe he said, uh, I have short-term memory problem sometimes the first time some someone tells me something but I believe he said she was their music teacher at one of the local schools and was his music teacher for many many years so a lot of people in the area knew her and um, as she aged uh, unfortunately she had Alzheimer's and um, they um, they someone got this hoop for her and it kind of helped keep her mind occupied they said she would just throw baskets in this hoop for a very long time so this was actually hers, and thankfully he said that you know she passed uh, you know very peaceably. So um, this was actually to try to keep this actually work. This basketball hoop worked in kind of keeping her engaged and keeping her mind active, uh, which is very awesome because you know basketball you know is it really works your your hand eye coordination. It really takes a lot of uh, uh, focus. Just the concept of throwing a ball and a goal. It's just a very fundamental thing that I think some people overlook, you know, just hand sports, uh, you know, throwing a baseball, shooting basketball hoops. Um, so what a better thing to do that rather than, you know, trying to build a puzzle or something, you know, why not do something a little more interactive? So this was apparently her basketball hoop be before she passed. So I kind of have a story to go with it now. Um, so We'll show this first and then I'll get, of course, I know I'm sure you all want to see the more vintage stuff that I picked up and, you know, things like that. I, I didn't really get a whole lot, but um, I will tell you, I spent $101 on everything, $101. Um, so where's the switch on here? Oh, right here. It's kind of, tat. it's kind of goofy. So like... Look, it's got a sensor. Or no, wait, hold on a second. See, it has a sensor. Two points every time you go past there. So anyway, that's a little bit annoying, but I don't have to turn it on. <laughs> I, I don't have to turn it on, but um, this would be perfect. So I can like set it in here. And I gotta put I gotta put air in these, but these are ones that I had. Um, so <laughs> first shot, right? It's a bigger hoop. Um, you know, not like a tiny little ball, so it's uh, a lot easier to to score on two for two. All right. So, um, everyone <laughs> who super chats, I guess you can have a, we can do some crazy combos now. Um, okay. So I guess I'll just start showing everybody else what else I got. So I got this cause I thought it was cool as you saw in the thumbnail. So let's not hold on this. I thought this is going to make an awesome display. Um, 
So you can add it all up. I didn't pay what it stickered, but that stickered $15. And he kind of write, did a little write-up of what he was going to charge me, so I saw what it broke down as. So basically, I think he gave that to me for like $10. Um, look at this awesome key. And um, it's got like a velvet in behind it, and it really shows up on the black. So putting this on a white wall is going to look absolutely amazing. I'm actually surprised somebody didn't buy this. Um, what was it marked? Which way did that go? This way. Um, I actually don't know if that was supposed to be a four or a nine or what. Or no, that was sideways. That was supposed to be $5. That's what it was. So they actually only had that marked $5. Um, and I think that's going to be amazing on a white wall. You picture the wood trim and the black. You kind of got that little brass look. Um, so when I saw that, like that was the thing that stuck out to me the most. Like I know it's not like super old. Um, it's just kind of like a vintage thing. Uh, like I said, most of the stuff at this estate was mid-century modern up until the 1990s. So yeah, I don't know. That's probably from like the 1970s or something, just looking at it. Um, but super cool. Um, so that's two of the finds. I'm going to show you all uh, what else I got. Um, let me really quickly see if this edit works on here. I want to try and turn the slow mode on and just put, you can chat every 10 seconds. When I do it before the stream starts, it always messes it up. But I just turned it on now just so we don't get any spam in the chat while the live stream's on. Okay, slow mode worked. Harry, what's going on? No, I don't think it'll fit in your pocket. Uh, it won't fit in mine, that's for sure. All right, so let me grab a few of the other things I got picked up here. We'll save the best for last. So this was just something random I grabbed because I kind of like the colors of it. Um, and it's very solid, but it's just a napkin holder. And it was a buck. It's very solid. I mean, it weighs, it, I mean, it weighs over, it weighs like two pounds. Um, you can see it's marked a buck on it. I just grabbed, that's the only like kitcheny related item I got. I didn't like any of the, I, I just I actually didn't care for the, types of stuff that she collected. I was just looking for unique pieces. Now this I liked because this is actually, let me put this down a little bit. Um, so if, if anybody wants uh, wants me to make a shot for him, you might, you can get the first one on the new hoop for a super chat. But anyway, I'm kind of excited about this because this is gonna, I'm gonna be using this as a relic box. You can see it's marked $8. So you would say, well, why would a little wooden box be $8? Well, it's not just any, a uh, little wooden box. It is from, wait, there's something in it first. Let's, sh let's show you this first. So I randomly threw this in there. Um, it wasn't priced and it was by their China. So this is a, a fancy stainless steel spoon from Japan. Um, so that could be uh, 1970s-ish. I kind of like that one. So anyway, so this box was made in India um, and a lot of the stuff from India is actually pretty expensive because I believe it doesn't say on it, but I believe this entire thing uh, was hand carved. And the hinges, like this lady who lived there, took very good care of everything. There was not much trash at this place. Like a lot of estates, there's just tons and tons of trash. Um, she took care of a lot of the stuff that she had. And you can see the intricate detail on this box. It's phenomenal. So this is going to turn into like a little relic box um, where I can put some of my metal detecting finds. You can see it has a really old sticker there. Um, no, who? I mean, who knows when this was imported? Uh, but it's got a little bit of like velvet on the inside, like a felt, and a um, little bit of like a wood liner there. But just amazing. Uh, relic box, um, just the, the attention to detail of what they did with this is just phenomenal. So I was trying to find quality pieces, and even if he wouldn't have discounted this, I was going to pay 8 bucks for it. So that's why you make a pile of stuff and try to make a deal, because the more you buy, 
uh, usually the more of a deal you'll get. But if I would have went yesterday, they probably wouldn't have uh, been allowed to discount anything yet. They kind of have to go by a specific, you know, kind of timeline. Um, so I was super happy to pick this up, you know, whether I put civil war bullets in it or silver coins or buttons or whatnot. Um, I'll let everybody know, uh, once I have a display a little bit more in place, I'm in process of going through and organizing a lot of my metal detecting finds this summer. So I got that box. Um, let's see. Hey, Gwyneth, how's it going? Where do you live again? I, I can't remember. I appreciate the invite, um, but if it's too far, I don't know if I'll be able to make it soon. Marie said, will you do be doing any coin opening again soon? Well, it, I'm not sure if you got to see any of the last stream. I'm having an issue. Apparently, there's another coin shortage here in the U.S., and my bank completely cut me off. Um, so I'm going to try to get more, but it's very hard for me to get coins right now. Hey, horse, what's going on? So thank you for letting me know you're on a different. Oh, I see. Okay, your, your channel name. You changed your name. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, wow, Mudswat. You lived in India for six months. That's cool. Okay, so let me grab some of the other stuff I bought uh, really quickly. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll start with this. And you all will have to let me know. If you think this is more of a replica, or if you think this is actually mid-century modern, it definitely is meant to at least mimic mid-century modern, and it has the um, Made in Japan sticker on it. So this could be original. I thought it was very unique. It's screaming like 1950s, 1960s, um, but very interesting design, kind of that, that mid-century look to it. Very with the, you know, the very kind of getting into the obnoxious colors and um, uh, hand painted in Japan has the stamp on the reverse. So it wasn't just a, you know, a typical made in China thing. I made sure of that. Uh, the Japanese imports are always better than the Chinese imports for the, uh, the vintage stuff. And they have that all taped on there. So I picked that up as well um, because I think that may actually have, like if that is legitimately mid-century modern, that probably has some significant value. Um, but I'm not an expert on mid-century modern on like what is authentic, what isn't. I just know some of the things to look for. Um, so somebody else might have a better idea of what that's worth, but certainly it was worth five bucks. And I think I got it for, he probably gave it to me for four. Um Carol, what's going on? AAP, how's it going? Okay, so let me get you the other really cool thing that I'm really happy about. Oh, check this out. Hold on. Oh, it's heavy. Oh. Can you read it on there? Eisenhart's Dairy, York, Pennsylvania. And it's completely restored. If it is original, I, I, had, I didn't really even inspect it much to know if this is more of a replica or if this is original one that's been restored. But I mean, it was marked 30 bucks and he gave it to me for 20. Absolutely going to use this for his display, probably in an enclosed area outside, or I may, be, may even use it here in the house. But let um, show you some of the detail down here. Try to get it out of the light. I know the lighting's not great right now. And on this side, yeah, the lighting's not great right now, but says E Pluribus Unum on it and has a really old drum on it. Um, just absolutely massive. Really awesome. Uh, there was a lot of like lawn type ornaments and different stuff that they had used in displays outside. You can see the $30 sticker that was on it there. He gave it to me for 20. Um, 
and there's something down inside there. Gross. Little flower thingies. Oh, and a little price thing for the estate. All right, we'll throw all that out later. Throw it in there for now. So that was a really cool pickup. Noah said $20, that's a deal. Absolutely. Um, I was going to pay the 30 for it, but because I got a big pile of stuff, he gave me roughly about 25% off of everything. Um, so that was cool. That was, that was a super buy. And um, let's see. So I just grabbed this. Why not? It's like, I'm pretty sure it's brand new, but when I say brand new, I mean like it looks like something, uh, it says exclusively marketed by Walmart stores. Um, but I mean, this is at least like 1990s <laughs> could be nine. Yeah, this looks like early 1990s, but it's sealed in the box. Um, so I'm going to use it as a, as a display. And if you guys want, I could, um, uh, maybe build it on the stream now. It's just a wooden curio cabinet, five shells, four spindle decoration, cherry finish. And um, I got it for four bucks and it appears to be completely sealed. So somebody got it, bought it and they bought it and never built it. Um, so that's actually an awesome pickup right there because it's very heavy. It seems like a, it's like solid wood. Um, so that's really awesome too. I'll hang that up somewhere, either in the house or in the garage, uh, to display some stuff. I know, cherry for four bucks. Can you believe it? Cherry, well, cherry, yeah. So, anyway. All right. Um, so, there's one more thing. And um, I got it not because it's, like, super antique or anything like that. But I really liked the colors of it. Um, and it works. So let me go grab it. It's very heavy and I got to be careful with it. Isn't that awesome? So it's a, a metal base. Um, and uh, it's got the awesome finial on top. And this, now this is made in China. So uh, I don't think it's anything valuable. Um, and this is more of a replica, I believe. Now, it could be a little bit older. Uh, I'm not certain. I don't know if this was just like a replica from like the 1990s or if this could be a few decades older. Um, like I said, it, I do know this says Made in China on it. Um, this, is a, this is a touch lamp. So this is the one by touching it, it um, dims. So, you know, you have it, you turn it on and then it has like three different dimmer settings and you can touch any part of this lamp. You can touch this, the finial on the top. Any part of this lamp that's metal um, is part of the touch, la touch, uh, touch lamp. And this is was marked $60, and he gave it to me for $45. And I really like the blue and green and white colors on it and kind of the deep, darkened brass look for the base. So you all will have to tell me. Did I pay too much for this lamp or is it worth $45? Um, I really like it, but actual value, this is one I was not certain on. Um, but it does work. And um, I don't have anywhere to really, I don't have the right bulbs right now to put in it, but it, the, it does work. Uh, and you can, like I said, you can just gently touch any part of uh, the metal on this lamp and it dims it. Um, so... Let me know what you all think. Did I do good on this or not? But it's like I said, it's very solid. Um, now, yeah. So, like I said, by looking at the inside of it there, 
you see it has a pretty modern uh it, it's pretty modern as far as like the hardware goes with like the packaging and stuff so if i had to guess i'd probably say this is like a replica from like the 1990s or something so uh Somebody else could tell me, but I liked it anyway, and I picked it up for $45 just because I really, really like it, and this will go very well in uh, one of the bedrooms. Let's set it, I'll let's set it up here for now. Well, now, I got the basketball hoop here. Let's put it back here. Now this is kind of just a joke. I didn't buy these, but he packed so it wouldn't break. I wanted to have him set that different parts of that lamp in like a big box and like wrap it so it didn't like move around and bust in my car. And um, he literally under the lampshade, he said I stuffed two pillows in there so it didn't break. So he crammed, <laughs> he took these and crammed them down in there so it wouldn't bust. So I got some free pillows and. This one's like really old and musty smelling. Um, I it's it's hideous. It's hideous. I didn't buy it. I promise. I didn't buy it. He packed the lamp in that. Uh, but this I'll find some use on. I'll put that on an old rustic chair or something. Okay. So, um, so all of that the uh, the curio cabinet, the gigantic uh, dairy jug, the uh, the napkin holder, the hand carved box, the key, the uh, the teapot, the mid century teapot, the basketball hoop, the lamp. Um, oh, there's one more thing. One more thing. All of it I paid one hundred one dollars. There's one more. Two. Two more things. Two more things. So, um, this I actually thought was one piece, but they were marked three each. It doesn't matter. He gave them to me for two fifty dollars each, so he was nice to me, so it's not a big deal. Um, you can see these are old plastic ones, and they're, they're stackable. They slide onto each other. So, you could, you could have bought as many as you want and keep stacking them. It's one of those types of products. But it's basically just, you know, it's like a cheap kind of, it's kind of plastic, but it has all of these pull-out drawers. Um, one of them's busted, but not a big deal. Perfect for relics, right? Throw that in the garage, organize things. I could see some metal detecting finds in all of these. So I'll clean that out. And, um, I got the whole thing for five bucks. Um, probably really not as worth it on that. But like I said, I wanted to make a big pile of stuff anyway. So I got a deal. So, I mean, I basically got some of this smaller stuff free considering I would have just bought the other big stuff full price. So I played it smart. Um, but I picked up that, so that's going to be like a little bit of like a relic drawer. Um, I already have a gigantic system of something like this that I got from the estate house that I bought. Um, but it's all for hardware, and it's just tiny little drawers. So this one's bigger and more friendly for metal detecting finds because you can kind of see in there and see what you have. Um, and then one more thing I got right toward the end. Oh, yeah, and I mentioned <laughs> that I mentioned I, the spoon as well. And um, this just kind of fascinated me. So um, right as I was about to pay, I told him, hey, there's one more thing in the house. I'm going to go grab real quick. I said, I don't even know if it's for sale. It doesn't have a sticker on it. You tell me. Uh, so this. So um, thermometer, which works. It's reading right now. Um, well, it was in my car, so it's showing hotter now, uh, but it's showing like 81 degrees on that. But like I said, it was in my car, so it probably hasn't adjusted yet. Um, now, it has a humidity reader on it. it. says right here, the humidity, which the humidity right now is showing about 69%. Um, and then it has this little area that shows... Rain, fair, very dry, stormy. Um, I don't know how it fully works, um, but this part is battery operated. Naturally, this is not. Um, 
So there's actually, I didn't, I didn't even look at this. He, he said my total was up. To, I was up to 94 bucks. He said he'd give this to me for seven. He said normally it would be priced at 15. So he added this and we went from $94 to 101 for everything. And this is screaming like 1970s ish to me. Um, somewhere around in there could be sixties, but, um, channel selector design certified as complying with FCC rule part 15, blah, blah, blah. Patent pending. Oh, it says right on here, Chicago display company, 1972. Okay. So that wood grainy look, that's what it was screaming to me. Seventies. Now I don't know if this works this bottom part. That's all stuffed in there. Um, but it takes a nine volt and I have a nine volt so we can go ahead and pop it in. Robert said, goes by barometric pressure. Exactly, exactly. Um, so why don't we just pop a 9-volt in it now and see if it works? I have some in my one drawer here for my pinpointer for metal detecting. Um, But anyway, even if it doesn't work, I kind of like the dark wood and the design of it. This will look good hung up somewhere on a white wall. It'll have good contrast and uh, a lot a lot visually going on. And um, I like the thermometer too. So that's kind of cool. So let's see. Let's see here if this thing still works. pop this nine volt in. He said they took good care of the stuff. And I agree from what I saw at the estate. He said pretty much almost everything that they found still worked. Um, that side doesn't stay in very well. Huh? I don't know if there's a good enough connection on the one side. It's expanded a little bit. I'd have to get some pliers and crimp it. I don't know if it's it's not going to be in full contact with that there. So we'll at least try it. But I might have to rig this a little bit later to get that other side of the battery to stay in. I don't know if it was on before. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to mess with this later. I don't know if it works or not. Um, so we're not going to spend any more time on it. But uh, we'll leave the battery in there for now. We'll leave it sit there. Um so what do you think, everyone? Did I get a good buy for $101, everything that I showed? What do you think? I think I did pretty good. I picked up some unique pieces. There was a lot to sift through. I was very selective. Um, there was a few bigger things I would have liked, but I don't have a truck and didn't want to go through the hassle of trying to have someone pick them up. So uh, I stuck to small stuff that I could fit in my vehicle. But there were some cool furniture pieces that were still left. Um, there was one gigantic... Uh, cabinet that was probably seven foot tall and you couldn't open it from the front. You can only open the glass from the sides would have made the most amazing relic one 195 bucks and he would have taken 15% off of it. So it'll probably be sold by tomorrow. Um, but if I, it's not too far from my place. If I go back, I could see if I could get somebody to pick it up. Um, so um, I'll probably, I might take it. I might stop back tomorrow. Um, but I, I think I did good on the stuff I bought. I try to take my time at the estates and don't buy stuff that I'm not going to end up not wanting shortly thereafter. But everything I picked up today, I'm pretty happy with. So let's, uh, I'll take a look in the chat here a minute and then we'll just hang out for a while. Hey, Ed, how's it going? Linda, I could run a U-Haul if I wanted to, but that would make it too pricey and not really worth all the time and effort.
Thank you, Jack, for the recommendation. <laughs> there you go, Michael. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, I think I did pretty good too. Cause I mean, literally this giant dairy jug, you know, jug alone and the lamp and the bat, I mean the basketball hoop, everything. And I knew I had to pick this up for the channel, right? I had to pick it up. Nice, Jack, a 1929 penny. That's better than nothing for sure. Linda said, need a fresh battery. No, that battery is is good. So I don't know. I'll, I'll have to toy around with that later. Like I said, the battery's not a very good fit, and um, I have to mess with the switch. That may or may not work. Same here, Ray. It is very hot, and that's why I got out the other day, two days ago, because it was only in the 70s, and the humidity dropped, and there was a little bit of cloud cover. So I actually did my longest hunt in a very long time, uh, because they found a decent location. So I did like a, a nearly six hour dig. All right. So I'm going to grab a drink here a second and we'll just hang out for a while and probably won't let the stream go too long. No plugs, didn't find that 1944 steel penny. So they didn't have any coins at this estate and um, in, unless they all sold out yesterday. Um, but they didn't mention any coins in the original listing, but they only showed a fraction of this stuff um, on the online pictures when I found it. Um, I can't imagine everything they had yesterday. They had a gigantic jewelry chest with necklaces and rings and all sorts of stuff. And it was gone. The jewelry was wiped out. Oh, I think I forgot about this. This was kind of a joke. So I don't, they didn't check everything good enough. And I didn't put this in here and try to get it for free. Uh, he, he was looking at it when he was giving me prices on everything. He said, look, you get a free pair of earrings with it. And I forgot about this. And he said, watch them be sterling. And um, he checked them and didn't say anything. Um, so they're probably not. But they were in that bottom drawer. And, uh. I'm going to check them right now. I don't think they, they're sterling, but let's check it out. And they look decent, but I don't see any markings and they look a little bit off. So these are probably not silver but they came free yeah i don't think they're silver you can see they're kind of got that little bit of tarnish that weird coloration happened in there but they came free they came free in that drawer i didn't pay for them um so yeah that was my 101 dollar haul it was kind of funny because like we were up to 94 bucks and he said me give me the other thing for seven and then he added up and he's, he's like 101. And of course, I could have said $100 even, but I wasn't about to try a nickel and dime them. I was like, sure, we're good. $101. So uh, a price with character. Kelly said can still fetch a good price. Yeah. Or, or, you know, let's, uh, let's check this out here. There we go. Ow. There you go, right? Arg! Little obnox obnoxious clip-ons, why not? There you go. How do you like my new look? Dazzling. <laughs> All right, that's not gonna, ouch, okay. <laughs> Very nice, Jack. Okay. But yes, yeah, so I got some free earrings. And this was kind of cool. I'm, gl I'm glad I picked this up too, because I, I think this is kind of like 1970s-ish Japan, and from Japan from like the 1970s, around the time 
60s, 70s, when a lot of this stuff was being imported from Japan, a lot of stuff like this. That's pretty cool. It's not sterling, but that's really awesome. That's that's the kind of thing I'd like to find metal detecting right there. If you found one like this that was silver in the ground, that would be super cool. Um, but that's the only small like doodad type thing I got. Like I normally don't buy like more knickknacky stuff, but like I said, I was making a big pile. And when you make a big pile and you're making a deal with somebody, you always throw in a few small things like this because you end up getting them free basically. So I picked a few of those $1 items that I liked just to throw into the pile to make it look like I was buying a lot more than I was. Uh, but yeah, um, we could try to build that cabinet now. That would be fun. But like I said, for anybody just coming in, that's cool, man. That is cool. Can't wait to get that put up somewhere. And um, especially maybe I can probably hang it up like right there after I paint this, uh, uh, after this room gets painted white, then this thing would really pop. But you can picture it, ouch, like right here or something, right? Yeah, I can see it. Ring, said, uh, ring Master Ray said, do you keep all your rings you're fine? Yes. Yes, I have all the rings I've ever found metal detecting, except for ones that I've returned, like I've found for people, which has only been a couple. <laughs> yes, bird dog, you'll have to watch the stream back. I can't go over it all again, uh, but there's a story behind that. It's very cool, the story I shared on this hoop. Um, it, it actually, uh, it actually came with a story. Uh, the guy from the estate I was talking to, I'll, I'll make it short for you cause you're just popping in. So the lady that passed who, uh, was one of the owners of these properties had all Alzheimer's when she got older and, um, they got that hoop for her and, um, she used to just shoot on it a lot and it kept her occupied and she would just do it for long periods of time. So that was actually her. Uh, basketball goal. It's actually electronic. It's very annoying. Um, it has batteries in it and kind of it can keep score and stuff, but it's it was made for kids naturally and it it's very annoying uh, the sounds, but you can you can just keep it off and shoot on it. It's got a flexible rim so it doesn't break. Um, and it's actually quite sturdy. It even has a base on it that you can put sand or water in. So it's not like one of them junky Fisher Price uh, piece of crap solid plastic ones that they still charge you like 60 or a hundred dollars for, um, that was probably 80 bucks or more. That could have been a hundred bucks, probably 80. Um, but anyway, I got it for like 10. Um, and for one more time for anyone just coming in, I got this monstrosity. Oh, and I like it cause I'm from Pennsylvania too. I couldn't pass this up. This was like my favorite piece they had there. I immediately set it aside. Ugh. Yeah, that thing weighs like 25 pounds. Okay. So who wants to send the first super chat for a shot on the new basketball goal? And this has a pretty decent sized rim and I already have balls that'll fit in it. So it'll actually, I can probably shoot on that one with high accuracy. Who, anyone who's been here, I already took two shots on it and they both went in. Need more cowbell? A little bit. Okay. Um, first of all, it's warm in here. I'm going to turn my AC down a little bit. But I actually think one of my favorite finds, I mean, there's a lot of favorite finds, but I really like this hand carved box from India. That is one of my favorites. Um, I was super happy to pick that up. It's going to be a perfect relic box. The detail on it, just, just phenomenal. But there was a lot to take in. There was a lot of stuff at these properties. And I was there, like I said, on day two. Um, Linda said, is that hoop telescopic? It looks like it is. I haven't messed around with it. Uh, about right there. Wait, 
hold on a second. This is tricky. Got to use two hands. Come on. How is this tighten? Oh, there we go. I see. So I'll mess with it another time. Look what I've done. Now it doesn't want to go in. There we go. Yeah, so it is telescopic. Let's see how high we can get it here. We'll put it to about there for now. We'll put it about right there. And I'll mess with it later, see if I can get it any higher. Yeah, bird dog, the, the milk jug is fantastic. I like it a lot because it, it's kind of like Americana too. It's got like a really old, almost like Civil War looking drum on it. It says he pluribus unum, 1776. Um, kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was all Linda's fault. She just had to ask if it was telescopic. Okay, I, I got to turn my AC down real quick. It's warm in here. Ah. All right. It hit the spot. What's left of it? You should write down your stories of treasure quests to make a biography, becoming a YouTuber, metal, and greatest finds. I could do that, but I got to work on getting my current hunts done first. I, I used to drop a lot more stories from time to time and kind of narrate the videos as I go through them, but uh, I wouldn't really be into the biography type thing. Whew, it is getting toasty in here. Okay, let me, I'm going to go get my other, I'm going to get my other shirt on so I have more ventilation and then uh, I'm going to probably try to build that cabinet while I got the stream going here and we'll just hang out for a little while and I have no idea how long I'm going to stay. Uh, yeah, good luck with that bird dog. You got to figure out where that water's going. I thought you were just moistening down the yard so you could do some more metal detecting. Robert said, is it any good? Um, it's okay. This flavor isn't the greatest if that's what you're talking about. It's all right. Um, I've had better flavors. One of my all-time favorite basic flavors is just the uh, uh, Limoncello uh, LaCroix. It's a classic. It is very good. A lot of people talk about it, uh, and it's not all hype. It is actually really good. All right, let's um let's at least get this box open here, and then I'll figure out uh, on another update um for selling my hot tub as we were discussing on the last stream. I I got the dealer to go up another two hundred dollars, 
So they told me they would pay twelve hundred for it. I said, and I told them, "Come get it. It's yours." So my hot tub is sold. Um, that was here when I bought the house, and I'll be happy to get rid of that and open up all of that space under uh, under here. It's directly under here. I'm on top of the hot tub. It is directly below me. Um, and yes, that's on the cheap side, twelve hundred dollars. It's a pretty nice hot tub, probably worth closer to twenty five hundred. Uh, but you know, a dealer's getting it. It's going to be as is. They're coming and picking it up. I don't have to show it. People don't have to show up in the house. I don't have to fill it up with water. I don't have to do all kinds of stuff. Um, so I was able to negotiate 1200 bucks for it. They said that's their top offer. I told them I had a, another filter for it. I had the, the, the steps that came with it, everything. Um, went, we went through everything, how long it's been sitting there without being used, you know, the age of it, any flaws, blah, 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 the whole back, back and forth thing. So yesterday, did a lot of back and forth with them. I told them, I said, um, I would like to sell it to them, but I said I thought the $1,000 was just just too low for me to be able to justify it. And um, so we went back and forth with them, getting more details about the condition of it. And they said, well, we can do 1,200 and that's it. So I said, okay, let's do it. Anyway. Let's see how this looks. Move right here. Oh, wow. I think it is brand new. I mean, I was assuming it was, but this is literally like probably brand new stock from the 80s or early 90s. Still has the styrofoam and everything. Wow. All right. The box smells so terrible, though. Man. It's all sealed. All the parts are still sealed in the plastic. Yeah. This is quality. Unreal. Let's see if it says on here. The assembly instruction sheet. Oh, that paper smells so awful. Printed in Taiwan. I was just hoping this had an age on it, of how old this is, but there's nothing on there. Oh, great. Well, that's some detailed instructions. Not... I'm okay. Let me put it this way. I'll be honest with you all here. I am good at building things. When I do it, it gets done right. The key is it gets done right eventually. Um, usually a lot of trial and error, a lot of staring and deciphering, a lot of uh, fiddling around. Um, but it's all in the prep work. I've learned with building stuff, it's all in the prep work. Take your time and do it right. Because building certain things can be very frustrating. Um, but yeah, let's just, we're not doing anything else. You know, like, let's just build it now. You get this out of the way. Ugh. And I can, I can even sit on my free pillow that he used to pack my lamp with. How's that? Because we don't want to use this obnoxious free pillow that he threw in to pack my lamp with. Because that thing is just gnarly. It's It literally smells like this was in a, some, some person's house from the 1960s. And it just sat there for 50 years. It has that perfect preserved basement grandma smell. All right. Oh. oh, yay. Assemble shelf base, 
to the two side handles by <laughs> oh great. Let's just get everything out of here first. Woo! That's some brittle plastic right there. Oh man, there's a little stain on that. I hope that's the bottom. Whew, man, the light here. I gotta block this light from coming in. This is the time of day where it's really hot here. Oh, that's much better. Okay. I see a super chat. $5 from Gwyneth Cook. Thank you, Gwyneth. You ready? Oh. Oh, rimmed out. Let's do it again. I'm two for three. Swish. Okay. This is way too much fun. One more for good measure. One more for good measure. Sure. Another one for good measure. Ooh, that's got a pretty... Pretty uh, pretty bouncy back of the rim. You got to get a nice stroke on it. You got to get a nice stroke like that. All right. Ugh. Oh man. From being super old, you can see how some of the paper, uh. War, it, it got moisture in it and rubbed off some of the finish of the shelf, uh, shelves, unfortunately. Um, so, because this, this was probably in a garage for a long time. So, unfortunately, this is a little bit damaged, but I will try to... Oh, boy, does that paper smell nasty, though. But I will try to preserve it and scrape that down the best I can, maybe lightly sand it, and we'll see what it looks like finished. It should still look okay. Like I said, it's a cherry curio cabinet for, I got it for four bucks. So, uh, we'll, uh, by the time I'm done with it, I want like $150 for it. Once the labor's in it, you know, it's like $4 plus 150 labor. That's pretty much what things are like this day, like appliances and stuff. The labor is so expensive to fix stuff. It's like you can buy something for like a hundred bucks, but they want $600 to fix it if it breaks. Right. That's how it works. So it's four dollars for the cabinet. It's one hundred and fifty dollars for my labor. this down a little bit, I guess. Uh, the problem, Ray, is some of it, some of the finish came off a little bit. Like even if I scrape it off with my fingernail, it pulled some of the finish off. It's been adhered to it for so long, unfortunately. and paper smells really bad. It even had, oh, it's even like, like a pinkish red tint to it from like the finish probably le leaching from over the years. Oh, that smells horrible. I gotta get this stuff thrown out. Okay, step one, unpackage everything. It's 
Spindle number one. Spindle number two. Spindle number three. And spindle number four. my hands. Gwen said, hey, want to see that dunk? Let's, uh, let's do this. We'll do for you. We'll do my first double dunk. I'll just have to navigate across all the boards here. Ready? Ah! Got him. That was my first double dunk. Oh, the screws are rusty. Oh. A little bit. Not too bad. You can tell the screws are have a little bit of rust on them. It's not horrible though. I'll still use them. There's definitely a little bit of rust in there. Yeah, not not too bad. Not too bad. Ooh. No, make sure all top, bottom, and side panels have the countersunk holes facing outward before inserting screws. So number one, assemble shelf base to the two side panels. Okay, what's the base? The base. I don't know what the base is. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six main pieces. One, two, well, it can't be these. These are the panels that go in it. There's four that go on the inside. And then there's that, which is, okay, there's two of these. Um, this is the little hangy doodad that goes on the top. So the base has to be, this hangs, because it's got the triangle, so this has to be the base. It better be, because it's going to be now. Make sure all top, bottom, and side panels have the countersunk holes facing outward. I think these are the countersunk holes, and they're what if you want them to face out. Right, because they're gonna go in the front. The spindles are gonna go up in here like this. Okay, so this is the base. Has to be the base, because this one's got the triangles on it. And that's where you're gonna hang it on the top. Okay. Place top panel on two sides. That's it. We just go from here to make sure while you're building it, blah, blah, blah. So all they basically tell, that's it. That, that, there, there are no instructions. Um, so I'm assuming, okay, right. So these are the side panels and these need to slide in through here. So naturally, these all, I gotta get my screwdriver. So naturally, these are just gonna go like this. Okay, well that's pretty simple. I just need to get my electric screwdriver. Oh, it's not in there. I think, oh here it is. You know you're a bachelor 
when my drawer for my electric screwdriver is in the bottom drawer in my kitchen. All right. I need somebody else to hold this. Let's try it this way. Ouch. Should have looked at that before. Some of these imperfections, I should have put that on a different side, maybe toward the bottom. Eh, it don't make much difference. Okay. <sighs> Don't screw it up, JD. I'm trying not to. Is it 100 degrees there? No, it's like er uh, early 80s. No, <laughs> listen to me. It's uh, low 80s today. Yep, that, that DeWalt one. Actually, that um, electric screwdriver, um, that was a birthday gift like when I was, before I left my hometown, when I just first started getting into fixing up properties and stuff. So that's been with me as long as the channel has been alive. I think I got that in 2013 as like a birthday gift or something. Oops, knocked the pot over. Oh, I didn't hear about the earthquake. Where was it at, Michael? 
Central Indiana. Okay. Let's go this way. Yep, that's better. Flippy uppy, uppy flippy. This thing little, this works. This works pretty good. Helps out on the old knees. Hey, if y'all want a story really quick, a little intermission, right? You ready to have a story? So, uh, you know how I went off here? Hold on one second. So you know how I went off telling everybody I, I did such an amazing job, job changing my weed whacker string the last time, and it was the most, the easiest it's gone in a long time because weed changing weed whacker string is not easy depending on what type of weed whacker you have. You have to do it just right. Well, so my weed whacker, it was working, but the way I rolled it around, um, it got bound up in a few areas. So I got to a point where the string kept getting shorter, but no more was coming out. So, um. Before I went to fix it, um, well, after I went to fix it, you know how sometimes it draws too much string uh, and that, you know, that's like too loose. And sometimes it does that normally when you're first getting it started. So I was weed whacking in shorts and apparently I thought it flung a rock or something, but here, so the weed whacker, when it broke off a piece of the string, it swung, it flew off and hit me in the leg and like lacerated my leg. So yesterday... That is where the weed whacker string busted off and smacked me in the leg really hard and felt like a, a big rock hit my leg. But that was actually weed whacker string lacerated it and it like swelled up. So after I went through all that boasting of how well I did with the weed whacker string, I literally cut my leg open. Okay, back to building. Just one of these a little bit. That's better. Okay. I think we're lined up good.
Oh, wait. How's this going to work? Wait a second. Okay, wait. How's that going to work? Hold on a second. I'm confused. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, it's not quite the right size. There's a little bit of play in it, but I guess we'll have to make do. Okay, I see. Wait a second. Where's the... Oh, they're right there. Okay, so you go down in that way. Uh, I can kind of see the pre-drilled holes here. We'll have to see how that's going to work. Where's the screws? Where's the rest of the screws? Was that it? Am I out of screws? Oh, here they are. Thank goodness. I was going to say. Okay. Side do we want? It's got some stuff on that side. Uh, well, see which way it's bow in there. Make sure it goes to the inside. I think we're going to take these imperfections over those imperfections, and we're going to go it in this way. Oh, thankfully those line up pretty good. these you need a whiteboard like the kids have at school so you can read the chat from far away yeah or I could just put on my glasses I still don't know if I could read it from there but I gotta get in the zone I can't be reading the chat all right. Um, this is the only thing. So, like I said, some of these have taken off a little bit of the finish. It's not too bad where that paper, some moisture got in between that paper and the boards for years. Um, I could find, figure out which way to slide them in so that's least visible. But we at least have to be annoyed here. Oh, I just took a big slice off with my finger now. That's not cool. Got to at least get the paper off here. I could probably use a damp rag, but then I don't know if I want to wipe too much of that off. I don't know if that would be worse or better if I used a damp cloth. I'll try it real quick.
Oh yeah, that works a little bit better than using my fingernail and pulling the finish off. I can just get the worst spots with that and then dry it. That's going to be the best way to do this. Yep. Then I can separate the paper from where the imperfections are. Yep. That seems to be the best method here. All right, perfect. That's lifting off that paper. All right, well, this thing isn't, isn't too bad. Those ones are a little deeper. Yeah, one side's good on almost all of them, though, so I could just try to make sure they're rigged up where it's the least visible. I don't know what happened here, though. That's probably the worst one. Big piece of the finish came off, and then there's some black stuff on the other one, so that's the worst one. That might have been a factory defect. But I don't have the receipt because somebody bought this in like 1990. Yeah, and on that side too, there's a big spot where the finish is lifted off. Not bad though. Not bad. Ugh. Oh, sorry, I disappeared behind the chair. Okay, so... We're gonna put the worst one, man, that is pretty bad. We're gonna put the worst one on the top, so it's gonna be the hardest to see. I'm gonna slide these all in first. Wow, at least those fit good. We'll put that on the top back. Um, that'll face down. That'll face down, and this one will face down. So the next one will probably go like this. Oh, I guess that's about right. And then the two lowest ones. Which one's worse on the bottom? This one, so we'll put that lower. Pretty tight fit there. Oh, I forgot to look at the edges too. This one will have to flip around that way. And let me check this. No, that's worse. That's got to stay there. And that one has to stay because I'm leaving that in the back. So that's that's it. That's about it there. So now we just got to screw all these puppies in. Come on, let's see some super chats for my building expertise. And I'll take a shot. Wait a second. This seems. Yeah. These screws seem a little bit big to be going in the side there. I don't know how I feel about that, but they're saying same size fits all. One size fits all, so. I made one mistake though, and I forgot, or no, I can lift it up in there. No, that's good. Those can go in afterward. That's not a mistake. I thought I checked that before, and I did, so we're all good. I don't like this gap here. I wonder if I turned this around, if that gap would disappear. No, because it's the same size. It's a little bit of gap on that, but you won't see it from the front. Yeah, so I don't know about that, though. I'll have to check that out later. Make sure these are lined up. This is tricky. I'm 
I'm going to do them a little bit at a time. I'll run in a crisscross pattern the whole way down. Make sure they all go in before I finish them. Make sure it's lined up the best that it can be. seem all right crisscross to the bottom one here and then we'll flip it around and then I'll double back over the other way okay let's make sure they all fit on this side yep that feels about level we'll go opposites here so we'll start on this side Perfect. Down to this one. Good. Crisscross again. This one's really loose, so I gotta make sure I hold it right where I want it. Make sure it's going into that hole. Make sure it's level. Good, good. We'll do this one here. Good, all right. Flip back over to this side, inspect the front. That was a little flimsy, but it'll screw in once I'm done. Man, I think we're good. We'll finish these as we go. All right. That's better. Tight, tight. Flip. I thought I was missing the screw. All right, we got exactly enough. Ooh, that one turned a little bit on me. You gotta pay more attention. That one's okay though. Batons and what is the bottom? The bottom's got the Hickey Madu groove, I believe, like that. I almost hit myself in the head. Be careful now. Right like this, I believe. So up and down. Up and down. And 
I guess apparently I'll have to glue these in if I don't want them to move. So, ta da! Yeah, I'll have to glue those in. Otherwise, they'll move around, but I can do that later. Cherry Curio Cabinet, $4 plus assembly. Pretty good, eh? Four dollar. I like it. It actually looks better than I was expecting. I like that deep cherry color. I like it. I think the box is so faded, it looks a little bit lighter on here. It's a deeper color, which I like. I like darker grain wood better. So it actually looks better than the box. I'm quite pleased. Quite pleased. I gotta get a drink and we'll rinse my hands real quick. over here. Ugh. Thank you, Todd. I appreciate it. Uh, that was actually uh, for something that's been sealed in the box probably since around 1990. I'm quite, I'm quite pleased. There were no missing parts, no major damage, just a little bit of moisture damage took some of that finish off, um, but it's it's pretty good. It, it looks really awesome, and I'm glad it's darker than the box. You can see it's got that real deep cherry color. Um, that's going to look sweet with some relics on it. $4 plus 150 labor. <laughs> what are you going to put in the shelves? Todd, I have no idea yet. I have no idea. Um, some sort of detecting fines. Um, yeah, some sort of detecting fines. I actually have a similar one that's, uh, well, actually, it's one that uh, I stained. I got it, uh, I think, like a Goodwill, you know, a Salvation Army many, many years ago. And it kind of looks like a, kind of like a birdhouse, and it has ledges on it. And then I stained it a dark color, and I put a bunch of doodads on it. It's on the other wall inside my room. It has some coin star finds on it and just a lot of, a lot of other knickknacks that I've uh, uh, discovered or found over the years. Uh, a lot of the stuff from the, my Virginia estate property, uh, little trinkets and stuff like that, things that are interesting. Um, so yes, super happy with the way that turned out. Really glad I bought it. Um, yeah, really glad I bought that. I mean, my goodness. Basically, that's, I mean, $4. It's basically just like getting it for labor, pretty much. Pretty cool. I'll, I'll see. I'll show you all here if some of this real quick. I might be able to move this without. Watch my lamp. Okay. Uh, now, I can't take that off the wall. I will completely destroy it. But I can take a shot of my phone and give you all an idea here real quick.
So that is kind of what it looks like there. So on that are, I have a little container of where I put my special coin star finds like silver and foreign coins. I have them two oversized coins that are, there's like a buffalo nickel that's like this big. I got those from the Virginia State house that I bought. Some other knickknacks. Um, the green egg is that one I found while I was metal detecting that had a dollar bill in it. If you remember that video from years ago. Um, and then some silver charms I threw down in them little containers that I found. I found a charm bracelet that had been uh, like broken into seven pieces in a sports field. I put them down in these, uh, I'll zoom in it, in those little tubes. So there's silver charms I found metal detecting in those tubes. Uh, there's just a little wood cardinal there. Like I said, a lot of the knickknacks are for, from the estate that I bought out. Then I stuck my super glue on there, just ran random stuff. And then the one earring hanging there on that little glass or that little brass cup. Uh, I actually found a ster sterling silver and on black onyx earring in Walmart, and I just hung it on there. So I've got all kinds of things in there. I probably have something inside this little brass cup. I can't remember what's in there. Um, but a lot of just little uh, clay and wood figures. Uh, one that's like a honeybee pot that was actually left here with the house with some bee-related items that the previous owner left here. Um, and I, I got that at a Salvation Army for only like a couple bucks, if I remember correctly. And then I, um, I stained it and it turned out really nice. Um, LG, what's going on? Oh, you got stuck. What happened? Okay. For all of June, that's you. All right. JD, have you shown the dimes that you mounted the other night? What do you mean, like, shown them? I don't know what you mean. They're, well, they're, I have them sitting in on the other rack. Uh, do you display any of the bottles that you found? Um the bottles that I display are actually in my garage. I have uh, ledges that I stripped out of the Virginia estate and I, I mounted them above the windows. And I have a lot of the bottles that I found over the years in my garage uh, up on shelving. So I've never dug a ton of bottles because um, I don't focus on bottle dumps. But some of the better stuff that I have found over the years is in my garage up on the shelving. I don't I try to keep that stuff out of the house so I don't they don't get knocked over all the time or, you know, just they're kind of dirty. I try to keep all that stuff to the garage. Today, have you shown on this stream? No plugs, but I can real quick for anybody who hasn't seen. Well, I won't show the other one because it's not super secure. But this is a near like a nearly perfect 1916 Mercury dime I found that has solder on the back, and I fit it in one of these porcelain things. If you watched my marathon stream before. We kind of worked on that project, picking up that little porcelain uh, thing for a photograph. And I rigged it in to be a mercury dime holder. That is one of my favorite silver coin founds I've ever found metal detecting. A like golden rainbow toned 1916 mercury dime that was a, used as a jewelry piece at some point. And just, oh yeah, look at the perfect lighting on that right there. Just stunning. Actually, now the lighting's perfect. You can see that. Absolutely amazing. I may as well show the other one real quick while I'm here. This one I don't have fully secured in. And this is a mercury dime or a barber dime that I found next to a pine tar soap token uh, that all was in a fire found around an old house. And that is a 1911 Barber dime that was melted at high heat. You can see all the cracks in it, but it had good detail on it before it was destroyed. We got that mounted in there. So that was a fun project. LG, thank you for the $20 super sticker. Wait for it. Where's the, where's the other ball? 
Here's the... I don't know if you saw earlier, LG. You got to watch the stream back. There's a story behind this hoop, actually a significant story that came from the estate. So here it is for you. Butter! Let's go for two. Oh, a little bit off on that one. I'll get the flow. I'll get the flow. Oh, rainbow. One more shot. One more shot. Get that good form going. A little short. A little short. Oh, but it came right back to me, so you got to shoot again. I got to get used to the length, the depth on this one. I don't want to throw it like really hard. I'm trying to do nice rainbows. Let's do one more. I won't, except I'll do a little more direct, not as much of a rainbow. Right there. That's the stroke. You got to commit to it. Got to commit to it. That's the stroke. Right there. Right there. So good. It's hitting that lip and coming right back. Right there. Right there. Three in a row. Let's stop on a high note. Right there. Okay. My support hand hides the basket. I'll move it somewhere else. I just throw it through it there for right now. All right. Man, that was a fun estate sale haul, though. Um, so let's move everything back. Uh, I'll have to mess with this later. Because um, it hasn't changed. So this bottom part definitely is not working. But like I said, this could be a battery issue. Um, the thermometer is working because it's gone down since I brought it in my house. So this is definitely working here. And some of this is not lined up, I don't think. But this has a nice place to hang it on the wall, too. Um, let me try to hold this battery on. Hopefully I don't shock myself. Let's be really careful here. I don't know. I'll have to tinker with this. I'll have to tinker with this. Oh, yeah, anyway. It's got the hum humidity there. I don't know if this one's going to work, but it's pretty cool anyway. From 1972. 1972. Not the battery itself. I mean the... I mean the connections on, never mind. I have um, severely burned myself on a battery before. Um, and that was uh, kind of my fault, kind of not my fault. Uh, long story on that one. Actually, I burned myself with my Technetics metal detector, the battery compartment. Uh, I literally fried the tip of my finger. Um, yeah, that actually happened in a video that never got posted because that was just a really bad trip. It's a long story. I went to purchase a vehicle that I didn't end up purchasing, uh, knocked on somebody's door, got yelled at, uh, ended up metal detecting somewhere in public property where we didn't, where I didn't find much. I severely burnt my finger and, and then stopped at a, at an Airbnb that ended up being a complete hole in the wall and had to drive home instead of spending the night. It was a really rough trip. Probably my worst one ever. Well, one of them. A lot, everything that could have went gone wrong went wrong. So yeah, I pretty much rented out a mold infested uh, trailer that was actually supposed to be a really nice place. Burnt my finger, didn't close a deal on my vehicle, and a guy yelled at me to get off of his property. That was quite the trip. JJ, what's going on? Wow, it took a little while to put that together. I've already been here almost two hours. I'm going to scroll up a little bit, see if I missed anything.
I don't think I missed much. Yeah, I don't think I missed much at all. Hey, Dizzy Giraffe, what's going on? Kathleen, how are you? Vaughn, man, good to see you. <laughs> Bob the Builder Live, that's funny. I'm definitely not a carpenter. I just put together things that are already pre-carpented. Okay, don't think I missed a whole lot. Is the simplex a good detector? Everything from what I've seen, sure. No plugs, no record stream today. I'm not going to be here for 10 hours. Um, I actually don't know if I'm going to stay much longer because, to be honest, doing two streams back-to-back -back and, like, a couple days apart, there's really not a lot of people here. I'm not going through coins. It's probably going to be a slow day because it's a Thursday, too. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a little uneventful. I'm going to run out of things to do here very shortly. Now that I've built that, gone through the estate stuff. Um, I updated everyone in the hot tub. Oh, did he text me back? Not yet. Hopefully they don't change their mind. Okay, that's perfect. Let me have blank, our service manager... Get in touch with you tomorrow morning about when we could come get it. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks. These live streams really help me do the mundane tasks that I sometimes is, well, just really mundane. This I feel, I feel like this is turning into some sort of weird reality TV series. Like, minus the drama. We just need some drama. I have to conjure up some drama. Can we have a J.D. Cook stream? Um, no, but I'm glad you mentioned. Um, when, when I picked up my Frosty, I got some chicken nuggets uh, in the, the fridge. I'll probably eat them now because I need more food today. And here's, here's a random thing for everyone. I prefer to eat chicken nuggets cold. Like, obviously cooked, obviously. But, like, you, if you get them from, like, Wendy's or something, I like to eat them. I bring them home and put them in the refrigerator until they're cold. Then I'll dunk them in ketchup or ranch. And I actually have a ranch, some leftover from a local deli here that's really good. So I'm going to have cold chicken nuggets and ranch probably now while we're figuring out what to do next. And maybe I should have a, a cup of tea with my new mid-century modern Japanese teapot. What do you say? No, that would be nasty. Who knows what's in there? That would have to need a deep. That would need a deep clean. Yeah, I'm gonna rinse my uh, rinse my hands off and I'll munch on some nuggets while we're figuring out if I'm gonna leave here or if I'm gonna stick around longer. Because I would like to do some stuff outside today, as the sun goes down. Maybe go on a hike or something. Maybe something like that. down a little bit. I got to move the hoop so it's not right behind me. That's going to bug me. Let's see where we can put it for now. Maybe it'd be better to put it over here. There's still water inside that. We'll set it right there for now. There's still water inside the base of it. I got to figure out if I want to put more water in there or if I want to put sand in that. I don't know. But I'm really happy with that. I would have never thought to buy one like that. I don't even know where that came from. But it's perfect. It's better than the stupid, fully plastic Fisher-Price things. And, and it's sleek. It's very slender. It's not like small and bulky. It's perfect. It's literally perfect. Mm, look at that. 
from the local deli, a homemade ranch. Ooh, look at that. Yeti Mountain Trading, what's going on? Okay, plugs, I'm listening. I'm running out of time because it's slowly, I'm slowly losing soil from the bank, from the support system. I don't know why, these are just much better cold. Who likes my thumbnail for the live stream? I kind of like it. My eyes look a little bit funny, to be honest, though. Oh, yeah, this ranch is really good with fries. I, try, I don't eat a whole lot of fried foods anymore, though, so I rarely ever eat French fries. So if I, it's like I'll make them myself if I do French fries. Tunnel through the clay, right under the stove in two spots and slides of support beams through those two spots. And then support ends on the on the end of the beams. Boom. I mean that that might work. That might work. Cause then at least when I dig all the soil out, it'll keep it intact. But then I still don't know how to move it. I'd have to build something else around it. I mean, either way, it's gonna be complex. I mean, but that's a good idea. It is a good idea. Yep, Robert, that's what I mean. The fries you make yourself in the oven are usually better than fast food fries, which tend to be very greasy. Good night, Marie. Thank you for stopping by. All right, Ringmaster Ray. Come back with come back and if we're still here, let me know what you found. So McDonald's puts an anti-foaming agent in their um, their chicken nugget. Uh, I don't know if it's on the nuggets or in the oil. I think it's on, on the nuggets. Anyway, in McDonald's chicken nuggets, there is an anti-foaming agent. Can't be good for you. Koya, what's going on? You missed cabinet assembly in the estate hall. We picked up some good stuff. Maybe I'll make a big pile of behind me of everything so at least everyone can kind of see it.
Probably gonna finish my ice cream here in a minute. I've actually done everything I wanted to do on today's stream. We're all caught up. Done with the storytelling, the estate hall, cabinet building, fiddling around with stuff. I don't think I have any other projects. Ate my food. <laughs> So let's try to put this into perspective on a uh, on a work to reward ratio. This will be fun. This will just be something extremely random, extremely random. So if I go under my videos, so on the last stream, my monster ten plus hour stream. Uh, I don't know how much in super chats it was, but YouTube takes thirty percent. So once you minus YouTube's cut of the super chats, and then you add in the revenue from ad revenue from the first 48 hours, which is almost nothing from live streams. Like I said, live streams barely get any ad revenue. So I made $112, which uh, from the last live stream, which was 10 hours. So I basically worked at uh, I worked at about $11 an hour for 10 hours. <laughs> Ring rat, mass race it now to the box of halves. I wish. Have I ever done a trivia night on live stream? No, but that's actually a pretty good idea. Let me at least put this here so everybody can see it. Oh, my massive uh, dairy jug. All the way from York, Pennsylvania. That thing is awesome. Oh, it's so heavy though. We're gonna set it right here. I can set it below the basketball hoop. Like this. See if we can make two shots, make a shot and it goes into there. We can try that. Let me get all this out of the way here. I'm curious to try that though. Where's the basketball? See if it'll go in. See if it'll go in. Both. You ready? Oh, miss. I gotta turn this a little bit this way. Let's try that right there. Oh, it went in, but it's not going to fall straight down into that other one unless they do like a really crazy rainbow. Well, that one went in, when it, but it went behind it. Try to get the two for one. Oh, almost. Made three shots in a row though already. See, see if I can get it to land in there, too. Oh, made the shot, but almost went in. Well, let's go for five in a row anyway. That's really hard to get it to land in there. Five in a row, but I can't get it to go in the, the other one. Almost. I clipped the top on that one. I clipped the top of my thing. All right, well, enough of that. Now that I had nuggets, I gotta finish some of my ice cream with the walnuts. And then, I don't think I'm gonna stay much longer. Or maybe I could go run my errands and leave the stream running. Who cares, right? I'll put up my little BRB sign and come back later. Hmm. 
Joe said, much better hoop. Absolutely. So I know it's kind of annoying, but let's let's try the game on it and see how it works. Okay, so let's see how this works. What's happening? I don't know I don't know how long it goes Ooh. You can hear beep and it has like a timer on it. It's kind of no annoying to be honest. I like it better without the... So we'll have to go for a high score. Like I'll have to set it up and legitimately have a shootout and see how high I can get. That ran for like what, like two minutes? So, and it seems like toward the latter half, the shots are worth three instead of two. At least that's what it seems like. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, of course, you can only go up to 99, but that would be pretty hard to do. So we could, like, save this for, like, bigger Super Chats or something and say if somebody sends, like, I don't know, like 10 or 15 bucks... I can set it up back there and see how how many points I can score from sitting in my chair within the time limit. And we'll we'll try to keep a tally to see the highest score I can get over the expanse of my streams. Anyway, that was a steal for 10 bucks at the estate. I just couldn't believe they had that there. It was like perfect. I'm like, I have to pick this up for the live streams. Yes, little Dixie, two days ago I got a really awesome dig in that I got to edit. I got a couple digs in in the last two weeks. Michael? Nope, I was good. I was good, except the, um, up until, like, maybe, uh, early evening of the following day, my throat was a little bit raw from those ghost pepper almonds. Um, 
And I think back behind, my, somewhere in the back of my mouth, I think I cut it open a little bit on one of them. And then the, the heat got in there. So my throat was a little bit raw for like almost the next 24 hours. But that was about it. I think I've got to look up that earthquake. Yep, it's one of the top Google search when you start searching earthquake. Yeah, 3.8, six miles from Rockville, Indiana. You are now watching JD's news segment at 3.18 p.m. There was a 3.8 magnitude 3 point earthquake recorded on the Richter scale, six miles from Rockville, Illinois, or excuse me, Indiana. Don't fire me, please. It's my first day. Interesting. Three point eight is not very big, but it's not nothing. So last year, there was uh, an earthquake only an hour and a half from me, but because it was on the other side of the mountains. You couldn't really feel it here. Even though some people claimed they could, I didn't notice it. Even though it was only, I don't even think it was an hour and a half away. But yeah, that one that hit North Carolina, what was it, like a 4.0 or something? Or 4.2? It was pretty decent for around here. Um, but the mountain, so even though it was felt the whole way down into Georgia and the whole way up into Virginia, we didn't, even though I'm really close, it, you can't feel it as much, like I said, because the mountains really break it up. So it's weird how some people could feel it like five hours or like four to five hours south of where it occurred, but not like an hour and a half west. Very interesting. Oh yeah, you're from Peru. You're you were way far away from the earthquake. And uh, a few years ago, I was metal detecting in London, Kentucky. So I titled the video "Treasure Found in London," and everybody clicked on the video, thinking they were thinking I was going to be metal detecting in London, and I was. It was just a different London. I see, Michael. Very interesting. We don't get a lot of tornadoes here because I'm close to the mountains. 
in Tennessee to get frequent tornadoes, you really got to be in the far western side of the state where the terrain's more flat. But um, we get some crazy thunderstorms and uh, freak hailstorms where I'm at. Yeah, there's a Brazil, Indiana. Yeah, there's a there's a Paris in western Tennessee, Paris, Tennessee. So Oh, I get rid of this. There's this new thing when I updated my computer. Now I have like the weather on the bar on the bottom. And when you hover the mouse over it, it brings up a huge page. Um, so I'll tell this story. This is a good story. I can't, I can't pass this one up. Because someday I may still have to make the video. So we'll tell a story. This was one of the videos that was going to be back when I was traveling a lot more a few years ago. So I decided for maybe a cool YouTube series was to drive around to a bunch of different towns all over the country that had weird names and then just make funny titles out of them. And of course, make a good video though, and metal detect. Um, so in Kentucky, I found a town, the name of the town in Kentucky is hell for certain. So I started reading into that. And it's actually kind of a fascinating story. I guess there was a preacher um, going up into that remote area, and somebody asked him what he thought about the town, um, I guess, when he came back from his trip. And he said something like, it was hell for certain. So it kind of stuck, and now the town is literally named Hell for Certain, um, uh, Hell for Certain, Kentucky. And it's just out in the middle of nowhere, like in, in a cool country. Um, so... Um, so I was looking into well, where could I where where could I metal detect where could I metal detect in hell for certain? So I started looking for public schools. Um, you know, let me see if I can find this on Google Maps. Um, so I found their elementary school um, in hell for certain, Kentucky, and um, I was able to pull it up on Google Maps. This was years ago, and. Lo and behold, the sign of the school, because it's broken down into different parts like most towns are, the elementary school had a big sign uh, on the top of the school that said, Upper upper Hell for Certain Elementary. I kid you not. Uh, Um, let me see if I can find this. Where are we at here? Well, let me look up this for. Your family's from East Tennessee, Loudon. Lots of Civil War history in Loudoun. Um, I've metal detected in Loudoun multiple times. I used to only live about 30 minutes away from there. Um, I found some of my best Confederate uh, finds in Loudoun. It was occupied um, by the Confederates for, for most of the Civil War. Focus. It's probably trying to focus on this. Let's get that out there. Um, Oh, yeah, you better go change your bandage. What happened? Yep, a little dirt never hurts unless it's in your infected toe. Let me look for here. Schools near me. So 
search this area. No results found. Try search this area. There we go. Man, it's been a long time. Oh, well, maybe I won't be able to find that anymore. Yeah, I did know that, Joe. There's some interesting towns out there, that's for sure. Oh, I see, Michael. Yeah, I didn't realize. I guess Rob's doing a stream tonight, isn't he? I see he has this thing popped up here. I was just checking my sub feed here while I was just uh, cruising along here for a minute. If you're just coming in, hit the like button. See how many likes we can get on the stream. Actually, or no, wait, that's this one. We have a town called Santa Claus. There you go. Here's a few I knew of, um, just pulling up some random ones here on the com on a website. Um, I remember because I've been through there when I was younger, um, Accident, Maryland. Of course, all the random jokes that came up with that when traveling through there. Apparently, there's a Bitter End, Tennessee. Where is that? That must be out, we out the western part of the state because state, I've never been... The bitter end. Where's bitter end? Oh, bitter end is actually in, in near me, near, not too far away from me. Oh, an error. It's well, it's an area. I don't think there's an actually town called bitter end. Well, it must be, but it's not pinpointing. It's just giving me a zip code on Google Maps. So the title of the video would be Metal Detecting to the Bitter End, right? See see how fun these titles... Ooh, focus on me. See how fun these titles can get? I might have to just do some fun videos like that where the destination is the, is the idea. Um, there's a Booger Hole, West Virginia. Boring, Oregon. Bacon Level, Alabama, Bat Cave, North Carolina, Chicken, Alaska, skipping the ones I don't think are funny, uh, Greasy Corner, Arkansas, Hot Coffee, Mississippi. That one we're not going to say on the stream for, for obvious reasons, but I've known about that town. 
Ketchup Town, South Carolina. Knock'em Stiff, Ohio. That's an interesting one. Monkey's Eyebrow, Kentucky. No Name, Colorado. Normal, Illinois. Nothing, Arizona. Peculiar, Missouri. Uh, I see. I found Santa Claus, Indiana now. Scratch Ankle, Alabama. I like that one. It's like subconscious. It makes me want to scratch my ankle. Uh, I've never heard of that one before. That's a new one for me. Success, Missouri, which is probably a small dead town. Just a guess. It's more probably more like unsuccessful if you still live here. Unsuccessful if you still live here, Missouri. Truth or consequences, New Mexico. Hold on. Let me pull up. I want to pull up success, Missouri. It's got to be a very small town. It literally on Google Maps says success. <laughs> Yeah, it's like in the middle of nowhere. So if you drive through without getting mugged, you were successful. Um, two Egg, Florida. Turkey Scratch, Arkansas. Why Arizona? Why not North Carolina? They won up them. So the next one should be in Canada, and it should be why not, eh? <laughs> oh my goodness I'm focus on me why is it not focusing now I, I gave all my Canadian viewers the best idea ever why not eh Canada perfect opportunity there's a ZZYZX California I just spelled it out because I don't know I ain't trying to pronounce that Let's try to find some other ones. Fluffy Landing, Florida. Hmm. I think I went through both. Ugh. There's apparently a Satan Satan's Kingdom, Massachusetts. Whose idea was that? I want to look that up on Google Maps. Got to be kidding me. There literally is a Satan King, Satan's Kingdom, Northfield, Massachusetts. Crazy. Bear Dance, Montana. Some of these aren't so funny. Zigzag, Oregon. Big Beaver, PA. That's not too funny. It's, I mean, a lot of places are named after an, after animals. I'm surprised it's not Big Phil. Punxsutawney Phil. Burns Down, South Carolina. They must have had a major downtown fire. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there was a success. Where was that in Mississippi? There's a difficult Tennessee. I've never been to difficult. Difficult is, <laughs> as soon as you pull it up on Google Maps, the first thing you see is an intersection in a tractor shop. Yeah, that's definitely Tennessee. And it's right off, and difficult road is right off of Dog Branch Road. And right after, and on the right side is Little Salt Lake Road. <laughs> and it runs right off of Defeated Creek. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I kid you not. Type in difficult Tennessee on Google Maps. It's there's a tractor shop right in the middle, a farm equipment uh, tractor shop, and then you have Defeated Creek, Difficult Road, Little Salt Lake Road, and Dog Branch Road. That is as, as Hicktown, Tennessee as you get right there. 
Defeated Creek. That might have something to do with the Civil War. In that intersection, of course, apart from a bunch of tractors, there is a pretty old storefront there, which is, I think, that old tractor supply type place. Looks like a fairly old house. Um, where is this located? Um, oh, okay, it's, it's, um, oh, I didn't used to live too far away from there. Well, it's closer to Nashville. It's northeast of Nashville, more east than north. So, yeah, it's up in the middle of nowhere. Um, Jotham Down, Texas. American Fork, Utah. Bread Loaf, Vermont. Now, that one's pretty funny. Recluse, Wyoming. That's where all the introverts should go. That's probably where I should be. But if ever, if too many people move to Recluse, uh, it'll no longer be Recluse. Of course, that's a small area in the middle of nowhere. When you pull it up on the maps, so all you see is Recluse Elementary School, the United States Postal Service, and Recluse, Recluse Community Trust. Oh, this is too fun. Of course, you have a post office everywhere. Oh, that's trippy. I tried to go into Street View, and it's somebody's hands over the camera. I think the Google Maps camera. I feel like I just went into the Matrix. It's like just like a pink and white screen. I think somebody's hands over the lens. What? Were they afraid to show Recluse? The whole street is just this big pink and white blob. <laughs> Looks like somebody's hands over the lens. What? Go to Recluse and try to drag the guy in Google Maps onto the street. It's like the Matrix. It looks like a hand over the entire camera lens or something. Something's over it. Something's blocking the entire camera lens. Let me go further up the road. Still there. Like a maybe a pinkish fabric with like some light showing through it. Could almost could I don't I don't know. I don't think it's a hand. Okay. I guess that's enough with funny names. I'm going to become mayor so I can can name a town Idiotville. There you go. Daycone 710, what's going on? Hogwaller, Virginia. That's a funny sounding one. Yeah, I got to pull up Lick Skillet, Alabama. Tip of the day, don't lick a hot cast iron skillet. Unless you had your tetanus shot. Well, why does it pull up... When I type in Lick Skillet, Virginia, it comes right up by Saltville. I live very close to Lick Skillet, but it's not pulling up exactly what it is. It's just giving me a zip code. It's right by Poor Valley, and that's probably why they lick their skillet. Got to get every calorie up in Poor Valley. Oh, there it is, Lick Skillet Road. Ha, ha, ha. I can be at Lick Skillet Road in probably 40, well, that's a little further north. Less than an hour, I can be at Lick Skillet. Who wants to see a video in Lick Skillet? That, 
I, I have to do this. So it's going to be, there'll be a video, metal detecting lick skillet. I don't want to door knock up there though. It's scary when you get up into the mountains. People, you just, people probably their whole lives have never had their door knocked on except for the mailman maybe. I am very close to Lick Skillet. There's there's homes all off the street up there. Oh, of course there's no Google Maps view because it's up in the mountains. But I can look at Poor Valley where it goes up to Lick Skillet. I might be able to see the sign. Oh yeah, there's an old church here on the intersection. Yep, there it is, Lick Skillet Road, right by Allison Gap. Oh yeah, that's up in the hills. Some old stuff up there though. A lot of Civil War activity up by Saltville. So there were troops walking around Lick Skillet back in the day. You've been there since 2006? Awesome. My first video was posted in 2012. Ka, you metal detect there and all. If I found a cast iron skillet and lick skillet, that would be the best story ever. It would be the best story ever. Can you imagine, like, it's sort of just like giving people directions in, in, in rural areas of Tennessee and Virginia and all around. It's like, yeah, go down Poor Valley and take a left onto Lick Skillet, you know, and it's right past the church. And what I just said is real. There, there's Lick Skillet intersects with Poor Valley, and there's an old church in the corner. So, I mean, that, that's probably been directions for the last hundred years, you know. Head east on Poor Valley until you get to the old church and hang a left onto Lick Skillet. So for anybody who just wants to know randomly, it's uh, Saltville is called Saltville because of the salt mines there. And it was highly contested during the Civil War uh, because the salt mines were very important. So a lot of Civil War activity up in these parts. Uh, there were lead mines, salt mines, a very important uh, rail lines that went through. Uh, so, yep, lots of Civil War history in these parts. Okay, while we're hanging out here for a minute, I'm going to get a, get everything put away, and then I'll decide if we're going to wrap up the live stream for an hour or not. What do you think, guys? Should I stick around a little bit? turned out pretty nice. Can't wait to get that put up and get some stuff on it. I still got to glue those spindles in. get this box thrown away. This is really smelly. I wonder if there's a date on this anywhere. Probably not. Whoa, I just realized this. It's not even local. It was from a Walmart in Bentonville, Arkansas. Huh. 
That's interesting. Thank you, Linda. I like the new hoop too. Without the uh, <laughs> without the electronics, we just won't use that very often. But yeah, I like how it has the uh, flexible rim too. It's it's fairly sturdy for something that's primarily plastic, but the pole is not plastic. It's like some kind of some sort of heavy aluminum. Yeah, and this is a pretty thick plastic that shouldn't break. This wouldn't break unless you threw something really hard at it. So. This is actually pretty sturdy for a little hoop, especially if you filled the base in. Yep. I just remembered tomorrow is trash day, so I gotta make sure my trash is out at the curb. And uh, I might go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so I don't forget. All right, I'll be back. I gotta put my trash out. All right, guys, uh, it's very nice out this evening, so I'm probably going to go do some hiking or shooting some hoops or outside or something and I'll wrap it up and just keep it keep it for a short stream today. I just wanted to come on and show all the estate state finds and stuff and just hang out for a little while. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pack it in for today, and um, i got some more metal detecting videos on the way soon that maybe I'll edit them this evening. 
um, tonight sometime. Maybe get some videos ready for maybe, maybe hopefully this Saturday. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go, uh, go out and enjoy this beautiful evening here because it's like a perfect evening today. It's like 80 and sunny and the sun's starting to go down. It's just awesome outside. So I'm going to go enjoy the outdoors, get some yard work done, maybe get a hike in, shoot some hoops and uh, call it an evening. So uh, thanks everyone for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one.